Hey guys, what is up? It is me, Pagey, here once again with another video on Superman Lois Season 4, and this is going to be my review for Episode 1, the season premiere, the final season premiere for Superman Lois. Uh, episode 2, my review for that will be up probably later on. Just keep your eyes out for it. It might be out now, I'm not too sure, but for now, we're focusing on Episode 1. I wanted to keep the episode reviews separate, um, just for like the formatting of, in regards to my uploads, so... If people watch episode one, they can then watch the episode one review. They don't have to stop halfway through the video or something like that. But episode one is entitled The End and The Beginning, which is a bit of an ominous title, I guess you could say, but, you know, make of it what you will. And of course, spoiler alert for anyone that hasn't watched the episode yet, we're going to be jumping into spoilers. We're going to be talking about everything, all the major stuff in the episode at the very least, but even some of the minor stuff. Um, so you get to spoil it. So go away if you're not watching the episode yet. But if you have watched the episode, be sure to let me know in the comment section down below your overall opinions on the episode, overall thoughts on the premiere. What'd you like? What didn't you like? Favorite moments? Any theories and predictions going forward? Let me know. And of course, if you want to enjoy the video, want to drop your like, I uh, want to drop a like if you enjoyed the episode and stuff like that. Do that. Drop a like. Takes two seconds. Supports the channel. Now, of course, we ended last season with the big ending on the moon, the fight on the moon with Superman and Doomsday coming together. Doomsday with his spikes, Superman with his fists, and they come together when we fade to black. And that's where we pick up this season. But overall, this episode was fantastic. An amazing series premiere that perfectly, I think, continued on the end of last season, picking up right where we left off. And I was sort of... I don't want to say I was surprised by how it was formatted because it was one of the ways I guess they would do it in regards to how they, how would they, how would they like go about following on from the end of last season, but it had the perfect build up emotionally, just the pacing and everything like that. I think they did an amazing job with this series premiere. I think they, I think they nailed it. I actually think they made a perfect episode. Um, I'm actually sort of, sh I don't know why I'd say I'd shocked because Superman Lois has always been very consistent and, I don't know, it just, it, it still surprised me, funnily enough. But anyway, I did like how we did sort of just, we went in almost, not real time, we didn't go in real time, but we didn't just stick with the Doomsday stuff and the Superman stuff and just get that all dealt with. They went through, you know, okay, we're going we're gonna to go and we're going to sort of bounce between the two as time rolls along. So that involved even seeing parts from the events of last season while Superman and Doomsday were fighting, but from Smallville and what they were saying and all that stuff. So we see Smallville while Superman is versing Doomsday, but some of the stuff on the moon, like I, that shot where, like we'd seen it in the trailer a bit where there was like trails of like, uh, where like the cape was left over. But then we get the shot in the episode where we go through and we see the trails of the cape, like multiple bits of the cape spread out, doomsday shards left behind, like the ex kryptonite, I guess it would be. And then also just like blood stained moon rock and stuff like that. And obviously just showing the ferocity of that fight and how hard it was going. And they really like, I think it is emphasized in the episode that we don't see all of the fight, which I think is great at the same time, like, because they were just going at it. It was just this massive war between the two that went on for so long and then came up with the outcome, which we'll talk about. Now, Luther does arrive in downtown Smallville, which we knew was going to be the case. We knew he was going to be sort of setting up in Smallville, but we know that he has, uh, well, I guess because Amanda McCoy's there. We do meet Amanda McCoy. I actually wasn't too sure we'd meet her this early, but we did. So we meet Amanda, McC uh, Amanda McCoy, who's waiting for him, and she like buys this hotel in downtown Smallville in Luther's name. And that's, you know, it's, it's conveniently located literally across the street from the Smallville Gazette where he can keep a close eye on Lois. But uh, Lex, uh, Lex Luthor, or we'll just say Luther wants Amanda to focus in on one thing. Firstly, he wants Milton, um, who I don't know if we've met. I don't think we have. I, I, know, I, might have to, I might have to do my little bit of research and stuff into that because it's not popping into my head exactly who that is. Well, Lex wants Amanda to get Milton to build him something. That's one thing. But also, he wants Amanda to locate his daughter, Elizabeth, who was last seen in London. Uh, so we know that she's going to be popping in. We just don't know exactly when and how that might change uh, Lex as a character throughout the season. Now, one of the big missions in this episode is locating General Lane. Of course, we already knew his life thanks to the trailers. Um, but Jordan's just trying to locate him throughout the episode. So that's one thing that Jordan's sort of trying to be focused in. But one thing this episode does, which... I wasn't too sure like how it'd be done. We knew it was going to happen this season, but I wasn't too sure how they'd place them in and sprinkle them in, whether they just do one episode or half an episode with just straight things of these uh, designs or in, in the style. But we get multiple flashbacks throughout the episode and it's obviously very Clark and Lois, um, you know, 
centered, but also just focusing around things that are happening in the present day and things connecting to them in the past. So we do get a flashback to shortly after Lois learns that Clark is Superman and just the overall general reaction to that, which I thought was nice. And it, it, there's just things that are sort of like triggering these flashbacks for Lois throughout the episode. Now, Luther does confront Lois at the Daily, uh, at the Smallville Gazette. I was going to put the Daily Gazette, combining Daily Planet and Smallville Gazette, but she, he confronts her at the Gazette still wanting Lois to retire. She says she is, but he doesn't buy that. And I think we all know that Lois isn't going to submit to Lex like that. She's just saying, okay, I quit. Now stop being an ass. That's pretty much what she's trying to do. Now Lex doesn't buy it. So he's going like ultimate intimidator. And, and he's, it's sort of interesting to see because I think Lex's plan is evolving as we go, because I think he's just seeing how Lois reacts. Okay. She's not buying this. Okay, now I'll do this. You know, it's, he doesn't have a set plan. It's like this evolution, if you want to put it. And he's clearly getting more frustrated as we move along the episode. And I do wonder if that continues throughout the season, where he gets more and more frustrated, pushing him to higher and further extents, which uh, I think might be the case. But speaking of Luther and Lois, I guess, we do get a flashback to the Daily Planet shortly after Superman deals with Kryptonite weaponry, and this is actually shortly after their marriage. So this is before the twins are around. So this is, you know, almost 20 years ago, like pushing 20 years ago. But this is just sort of setting up, I guess, like the conflict that Superman, I guess also Lois, but I guess in regards to the fighting stuff, like Superman has dealt with Luther and like intergangs there and stuff. It's just Krypt uh, Kryptonite weaponry and things like that. So it's good that they're sort of like doing a bit of world building, which is sort of what I actually wanted them to do as well. But we also get another flashback fairly shortly after this with Lois in, or Luther might I say, in Lois's office at the Daily Planet as she is about to publish the article that leads to his prison sentence. Uh, sentence. And this is pretty much him saying like, yo, it's, it's not me. I must say he's not doing a, a great job at trying to plead his case, but maybe there might've been some other instances before where, you know, like he's like, oh, I've tried and she's not listening. And like the, the big thing around this is that we know that it wasn't Luther, but at the same time, we know that Luther has been do doing dodgy stuff, which that previous flashback scene sort of emphasized. So it shows that Lois has this distrust of Luther because he's not only doing dodgy stuff, but he's, I guess, essentially trying to kill Superman, aka Lois's husband. But General Lane actually doesn't have to, you know, he's just not sitting in his little, little strapped up chair the entire episode. He actually tries to riz his way, which I never thought I'd use that term in a review, but he's trying to riz his way to getting out, which actually succeeds, but he ends up getting caught before fully escaping, unfortunately. So, uh, RIP the dream. And he actually ends up getting buried, which is surprising. Like I was legitimately wondering, is he actually going to die? I actually thought he might actually die in that moment because everything we'd seen of him alive, we'd seen like from the trailers, might I say we'd seen in this episode, there was nothing else. So I was like, oh, well, hold on. He might actually, he might die here. But luckily for General Lane, Jordan is able to find him just in time, shows it with Lois and they both sort of, uh, I guess, gang up on the two, Luther, uh, the two Luther goons there. And they do manage to rescue General Lane, which is lucky. But it's also interesting in the hospital, Lois really sort of like, brings down her walls, if you want to put it. And you can tell that Lois is legitimately worried. Now, I think it's obviously a mix of like, not knowing what's happening with Superman, that he actually might be dead now. That's probably a big thing there as well. But I think she's actually legitimately worried because Luther clearly isn't going to give up. And now it's not just involving her. It's involving her family and General Lane has almost died because of it. So yeah, it's going to be interesting to see how that develops over the next couple of episodes, especially considering what happens at the end of this episode. Now, as I was saying, like Luther seems to be getting more frustrated due to things not exactly going the way he wants them to. And this happens, he gets like more aggravated due to learning that General Lane did not die and he gets away. But I actually didn't even realize this until this happened, but he doesn't actually know about Jordan having powers. He knows of Jordan and Jonathan, he, he encounters them at the, at the diner, but he doesn't know he has powers. And they actually do name drop Superboy um, at that moment when he finds out that not only that General Lane is alive, but also that Jordan has powers. So that will be interesting to see how he goes about things now due to learning that information. I don't know if it necessarily changes too much, but it might. So that's a wait and see, a bit of a curiosity factor there. But the fight between Superman and Doomsday, it's still happening while all this is happening on Earth and it continues in space. And it's pretty much the SDCC clip, the San Diego Comic Con clip. We got about half of it early in the episode. And then in this pivotal moment, we get the other half. And it's Superman having his final stand with the heat vision and he gets punched in the chest, goes through this like asteroid and he's dead. 
he comes out dead. And at the point when you see Doomsday's fist coming up and it's covered in blood and it's also got like the crest sort of of um, Superman's, you know, suit sort of like like stuck on there by the looks of it. And at that point, I was wondering, hold on, has he got something in his hand that I think he might have? And it takes until the end of the episode to confirm that, though some of the reactions and stuff that we see throughout the episode may, or after this point, maybe go, oh, that might actually happen. That's actually sort of brutal if it did. But Doomsday goes full on savage, I guess you could say, and he brings Superman's body back to downtown Smallville and leaves him there. Just chucks him on the floor and goes, have fun with that one, Kent family. And as Lois sees Clark's lifeless corpse, her entire life with Clark and Superman, or more specifically just Clark, flashes before her eyes. And I thought that was a great, great scene. I actually was getting really emotional because it was weird because we knew Superman was going to die. We knew Doomsday was going to kill him. We'd seen that scene where Lois comes across his body in the trailers and stuff like that. So I was like, okay, well, nothing's really going to get you. But I think how that scene was done and the music and everything, just the build up to it was perfect. I think it was incredibly well done. Such a, I say great scene, but I think perfect scene is the best way to put it. And I think it actually capped off the emotional aspect of that scene in that moment perfectly. But Doomsday does return to Luther, which we sort of were wondering is like, what's the control factor that Luther has over Doomsday? And based off not only, I guess, some of the end of last season stuff, but also specifically that thing there and that he's following orders, it makes Doomsday even more dangerous and a bit lethal and a bit unpredictable, which is very worrying, I think, for not only as a viewer, I'm wondering how they're going to deal with it, but even like Jordan and stuff when, and like some of the people that are going to, and it was just Superman when he eventually comes back around. Like that's very concerning how they're going to deal with that. But Doomsday returns to Luther with Superman's heart, which is what I thought, like, I think a lot of people are probably thinking the same thing. It's like, hold on, has he got his heart in his fist? Is that what he's holding? And is that why there's big holes in it? Did he actually rip out Superman's heart? So Luther has that. I don't necessarily know what Luther's going to do with that heart. I don't know if there's actual a plan to use it, or it's just more that, like, he's just like, well, you're not going to be able to come back to life without your heart. So I'm interested to see if there's actual plan to use that, or if it's just a means of, like, so Superman actually can't come back to life. I don't know. But Lois appears to know that Luther is in possession of Superman's heart now. It's like she knows that he ordered Doomsday to take it. So, man, now we know what they're going to have to be trying to get back off Luther, I guess. Superman's goddamn heart. I can't believe that. That's pretty gnarly. But overall, as I said right at the beginning, I think they nailed it. I think they nailed it. I think they've created a perfect premiere and a perfect end, like carry on for the end of last season and a perfect setup for what's going to be happening this season. I think they've nailed it. I think it's a, I think it's an easy, and I don't know if anyone's going to agree with me. I don't know if anyone's going to disagree with me. I'm not too sure. I think it's an easy 10 out of 10. I actually am not ridiculously surprised because I knew that they would do a good job, but at the same time, you never expect, you can't, you can't like over, you know, estimate what people are going to do. And I think everything was great. The acting, I think the VFX was done really well, just the pacing, the music. I think I, I'm actually sort of stunned it's this good. And I'm actually very happy that I broke up the episode one and two reviews into two separate videos because now I get to really delve into episode two for what I'm sure it's going to deliver. So I'm excited. I haven't watched it yet, by the way. I stopped watching after episode one ended. So I have to catch up on episode two uh, shortly after uploading this video. But man, so good. But yeah, guys, thanks for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you did, it'd be awesome. If you drop a, look, uh, a, a like on the video, I might say, if you enjoyed it, let me know in the comment section down below your thoughts on this episode. Did you think it was perfect as well? 10 out of 10. If not, what was your rating? Do you give it an eight? Do you give it a two? Are you going insane? I don't know. Let me know in the comments. And of course, if you are new to the channel, make sure to subscribe and I'll catch you guys later. Goodbye.